Okay, all right, all right. Okay, folks, gonna be interesting today. It's gonna be very, very interesting. It's been a while. It's been a little while since I've done some painting. So, uh, yeah, we'll wait for a few more folks to join here before I start for the most part. Um, just gonna do a um, sketch of it on here very loosely, hopefully. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see how this ends up going. It's gonna be gonna be tricky. Thanks for joining. Uh, Kashika, Emerge, VS, Poker Face, Amanda Cortez. What is happening? What's going on, everybody? Lynn, thanks for joining. What am I painting? Uh, the good question. Here, let me um, let me let me enlarge the photos a bit. So this is what I'm gonna be painting. As we can see here, uh, so that's what I'm going to be painting. And uh, the other photo right above it is kind of the thumbnail that you see off to the side. That's kind of a simplified version that I photoshopped a bit. Um, I even photoshopped this photo you're seeing a bit. I added some purples on the building and some light greens on the bushes and stuff. Um, anyway, so that's going to be my subject. It's actually an uh, old historic courthouse in uh, Lahaina and Maui, Hawaii. And uh, I'll show you guys this other version that I did. This is kind of what I do to my photos and stuff when I paint them because I don't want to get caught up in all these little details and stuff. I, I want to focus on shapes. So this is kind of the idea that I'm going for, the concept. I want the contrast to be in the middle of the painting, kind of where the, those columns are and the, the little awning by that doorway. That's like the, the contrast that I want. And, uh, you know, I just simplify things. I got rid of the light patch on the building off way off to the very left of the photo. There's like this light strip in the uh, smaller photo, as you can see, I got rid of that because I don't want any, you know, I don't want a distraction there. Um, so yeah, that's my concept. That's what I'm trying to go for. So I just put that on there as well to show you guys what I do with that, like how I use my reference photos. You know, I, I, I simplify them a bit in Photoshop. I use a little filter called uh, median and it kind of blurs it like that. It gives it, you just focus more on the shapes. Um, so that's, that's really my goal, but yeah, this could be a complete disaster, just so you guys know. I haven't painted in a few weeks. It's been a little while. But <laughs> especially this large, this is a 9 by 12. And then I, I taped the edges here with some tape. But anyway, let's get started drawing. So, like I said, I'm just going to do a loose little sketch here. Try to, try to figure out placement of things. I'm, I think I'm going to start in the focal area and kind of build off there because this is the important part here. So this is like my focal area. I want like the lightest lights, darkest darks, maybe like the sharpest edges, um, most saturated colors, you know, maybe mixing some of those a bit here to make things interesting. Like I said, I'm gonna to try to keep, actually we need, keep it pretty simple, pretty loose. I don't want a very detailed sketch. And I might end up, this it might end up looking a little larger than what I want. I'm gonna try not to, but we'll see. We'll see here what ends up happening. I may have to just go with the flow. We'll just go with it here, see what happens. Okay. 
We'll see if the uh, this modified sketch, even though if it's if it's a different proportion than the actual photo, uh, we'll see if it still looks decent. You know. So I want to I want to keep this painting loose, kind of like a sketch. For some reason, for me, like I really love sketches of paintings. Um, like when I look at artists sketches that they do, like I've, I've seen artists that do sketches and then they do like a final piece. I always love the sketches way more. Like they're, they have more energy. They're more interesting. Um, this looks like it might be too large. I want to fit in some of this sidewalk down here. Yeah, I mean, to me, like, sketches just have more energy. They're just more fun. Really trying to capture, like, an essence of something. It's just, I don't know, it's a lot cooler. There's, like, an oval doorway here. What do you guys think? Is this gonna, do I need to redraw this or, I don't know, I think I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this, I think. I'm gonna keep going a little bit and we'll see. Uh, it's kind of cool because I actually cropped out that tree off to the side. So I actually like this better because it just focuses more on the building. You know, maybe I add like a little part of the, you're gonna be able to tell that there's trees here. Um, Anyway, hmm. just trying to figure out design here. We got some perspective lines. Let's see, a window here, trees. So I don't want a lot of detail over here at all. You know, it's it's definitely, did I skip a window? Definitely skipped a window. Okay, didn't even notice that. So let's get a window in here. And then um, another window down here. Yeah, more of the detail is going to be right in this area. Uh, the photo is is a photo I took uh, while I was in Maui in Hawaii. I actually just put out a video today of some of my trip in Maui back in August. And this is an old courthouse in a little town called Lahaina right on the coast, really, really awesome place. I spent three, week, three weeks there, been there twice on two separate uh, trips before so far, really awesome place. But uh, right in front of this courthouse is a, is a giant banyan tree. It's just an amazing, really, really amazing tree all these different branches, takes up a whole block of this town and a very iconic symbol of the town basically, you know, this uh, giant tree, man, it's really awesome. So, I'm pretty happy with this, I think. You know, I, I don't think I, I want the windows so solidified. You know, I want them to be, it's gonna be pretty loose, hopefully. So, we'll try to Especially the ones on over here. Definitely want these to be less prominent and then these be more dark and stuff. With this this shape here and this doorway, this will probably be the darkest area in the painting, I think. Because I want the contrast here and I want some light on these columns. Maybe some darks down here as well. So the thing about watercolor is you gotta have 
you got to have some kind of plan. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult. It's very difficult to just wing it. Uh, you have to really think ahead or you're going to, you're not going to, it's not going to turn out that great. So whatever happens over here on this side, it's probably just going to just be a little sketchy and stuff. Not worry too much about it. So that's kind of the idea of the painting. Hopefully, hopefully this turns out decent. Uh, like I said, I haven't painted in a few weeks, so hopefully I can keep this loose and not worry too much about things. So that's why I've simplified that photo. You see the top photo there, the top thumbnail photo off to the left. That's my idea. It's like a blurrier version. And uh, that's what I'm gonna be working on. I wanna lighten some of this up because <clears throat> don't want to be too dark under the painting. But yeah, hopefully I can pull this off. Um, All right, uh, so I guess I'll start off by showing you guys um, my palette here, just for anyone that's interested. I haven't really done a lot of watercolor, so I might as well just uh, start off like this. This is a kneaded eraser, K-N-E-A-D-E-D, -E -D, kneaded eraser. You can find them online or at the art store. Uh, so this is my palette. I never really clean it. I keep it like this. Um, mostly all the colors that I use are made by uh, M. Graham uh, brand. M. Graham. Let me show you guys real quick here. So this is like what the tubes look like. All my colors. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I, I use, um, I mean, if you guys want to know the specific colors, I mean, I guess I can tell you, but, you know, it's just variety of, of uh, yellow ochre, um, Indian yellow, cadmium yellow here, cadmium red light, transparent oxide red, some kind of turquoise, a purple, magenta, viridian, um, I have phthalo blue, but I'm not, I think I'm going to stop using that because I never end up using it. And I have ultramarine blue and ivory black. And then some kind of white here that use very rarely. Um, that's a watercolor white, it's not gouache. And uh, the brushes that I use here, we got, and I don't know that I'll be using all of these, but this is kind of what I have. Most of the time I use this one. I've done paintings this size with the, only this brush. It's a number eight, um, I forgot what it's called actually. It's some kind of mop brush. Uh, there's a different, there's another term for it. I can't quite remember it, but number eight mop. And then I have a number 16 round, with pretty good size. And then a number 10 round. So uh, I'll try to remember to use all of those, but I always get tunnel vision, man, and I just, I end up using, you know, I just use the brush in all different ways. You know, I use the point, the tip, and I can uh, do a lot with this brush. So, yeah, quill, that's what it is. That's what's called a quill. Um, so, yeah. So I'm gonna start out, I think, you know, I, I think there's a misconception about watercolor, at least from what I've discovered for myself. 
is like people think you have to do it a certain way. Like you have to start out with big washes or you have to do it this way or that way. And for me, man, it's been very, it's been a very intuitive process. And I just have a little jar here full of water. Um, so that's what I'm using. If you see me like off the screen, like dipping in something, just getting some water here. And I have some washcloths on my lap. And that's what I use to clean the brush and stuff. So it's my little setup right here. And uh, I'm going to start out. But anyway, it's, I think there's a misconception like you have to do it a certain way. There's some kind of process. Like obviously you go from dark or uh, light to dark for the most part. Um, but you don't have to start off in like big washes if you don't want to. I mean, you can do everything very methodically if you want. I mean, it's all just personal preference. Um, and I, I find that I paint in the studio differently than I paint on location plain air. So every scenario is just different. It, it's, it's really uh, interesting what I've uh, found out over the years. So let me get my other photo here going so that I can not get caught up in details. Okay. So I'm going to start off with just some washes and uh, I'll try to show you guys some of the way I mix some colors here. So I try to, I try to just wet a lot of the colors before I start just to get them kind of ready to use. I know my palette looks very dirty, but uh, it's funny that some of the colors actually still have, uh, like this yellow ochre here still has, let me see if I can zoom in on that, because it's pretty hilarious. There's little like, uh, there's like rocks and stuff. This is sand from uh, Red Sand Beach in Maui from back in August that got stuck to my paint. And there's some in this ultramarine blue over here too. So I still have red sand and dirt and stuff because that was the first painting I did in Hawaii. And I got my palette out and I ended up kind of moving it in the sand a bit and all this, this red sand, which was almost like little pebbles, just got stuck all on my palette. Um, because the, the paint that I use, the M Graham paint that I use, it kind of has this uh, sticky consistency. It kind of stays wet all the time. Like this ultramarine blue or this phthalo blue, you can see there, it's still, it's not completely hard. It always has this kind of, uh, you know, you can push it. It's a little bit soft. Um, so yeah, this sand just got stuck completely. So I'm just going to mix up like some color for a sky here, but actually I don't want it very blue because I don't want the sky to be like a big focus. So I'm just going to like gray it down a bit. So anyway, guys, that's uh, how I mix colors and stuff. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I'll try to show more of that if I can. I'm just going to start out with a big wash here. Sorry, just getting, trying to get used to the setup. I'm not used to sitting down and painting like this. Usually the, my painting's tilted and I stand up, it's on a tripod. I usually have things really figured out. Um, so this is going to be pretty interesting. So I'm just adding a little bit of different color there. I'm actually going to try to lighten this up a bit. So one thing I have to be really careful of is, is uh, the light areas. I got to really make sure to keep the light areas white of the paper because that's my focus right around here. So that's going to be really tricky uh, for me. But that's, that's what I'm going to end up focusing on. Um, I'm going to loosen up and just start going down this side of this uh, with some greenery. So yellow ochre with uh, ultramarine blue. 
probably more ultramarine blue than yellow ochre. I want it to be like a cooler mixture. Maybe a little bit of purple in there. Just some cooler colors, cooler. A little bit of transparent oxide red. You know, just a bunch of different stuff. But I want the tree to be soft, like bleed into the sky a bit there. I want to darken that down a bit. So. So we're gonna see if this we're gonna see if this work. Uh, it feels really weird painting. I'm like very really not used to this at all. And uh, with watercolors, it's very tricky because time is an issue. I can't sit here and read the chat or anything right now. I'm gonna have to wait till uh, you know wait till I, I find a time where I'm waiting for stuff to dry. Uh, to really pay attention to anything else. So I'm painting some light areas of the trees here a bit. Usually light areas of the trees are a lot more yellow. A lot more yellow than uh, you think they're going to be. I'm just softening some stuff and trying to keep it loose. I want this I want this to be loose. I don't want do not want to get too caught up in detail, especially at this stage. So I'm just, I'm filling in a lot of the shadow areas right now. I'm kind of just going around connecting shapes and stuff and not exactly sure what I'm doing, to be completely honest. Just trying to be careful here. So I know I'm gonna have to go darker under here. This is like my focal point, but I'm just trying to be careful right now, uh, that area a bit. I wanna lose some of these edges, made them a little too sharp. So just varying my color as I go along. I put some red, orange down, and then I put some yellow into it. I know it's kind of a crazy method. Kind of looks a little weird, a little crazy. But uh, it's kind of how I do it sometimes. <sighs> okay. 
All right, let me let me think. What do I need to do here? I need to get this building in. This is the should have got that in first. Um, so I'm just gonna use purple and like yellow ochre. Get like this gray color, this cool gray. Maybe a little bit of ultramarine. And let's try to just block this in. I guess we'll see what ends up happening here. This is a very critical area. And see, here's the problem here. I should have done, while this was all wet, this green, I should have done the, the uh, wash just so that the you know this uh, it's still a little damp so it's that's good because so we don't want these hard edges with these um, bushes and stuff at least I don't so that's kind of my mistake I kind of knew that but uh, so I'm gonna try to leave a little bit of white spots and stuff here a bit for some like dappled light so this is this is what's gonna be tricky and also I want to warm it up slightly when it gets near some of the this light area You guys are probably thinking, what the heck is this, man? But uh, this is how it goes, man. First stage, it's gonna look a little bit bizarre. I'm gonna darken under here now. Let's just go for it. putting some water here I want to soften some of this so one thing to notice now like what why does this look so crazy like why does it look so weird a lot of it's because it's all the same value almost right now you know we have some light area we have light areas of the paper still the sky is a little bit lighter and then we have a little bit of darks but this is a stage when a lot of people will think like, man, how are you, like, this looks stupid. This looks awful. Like, this isn't going to work out. But that's the, that's the, uh, that's the thing about painting like this and like any kind of method like this. It's going to take a little bit of time for it to get it to where you want it to be. So you just have to be persistent. And I'm trying to stay aware of that. Like, it's not gonna be where I want right now. I'm gonna try to get, ah, uh, see this, this dark shape that's light right now? It's supposed to be dark. I should have used this kind of like grayish purple. It should have been all one wash. So sometimes I, I forget to do that. I, I end up breaking down these shapes and forgetting like eh, I should have just merged them all together so 
So see, now that I have that, that dark in there, you can start seeing like, okay, once I get more of these values in there, it's going to start working. It's just right now, all these shapes, everything looks a little bit crazy. You know, what the heck's going on? But you got to have faith or something like this. And really, I got to let all this dry before I can kind of go back over it on top of it again, get some real darks in there. So now is the time I can look at the chat a little bit. To gray down colors, I mean, you either use the complement of the color or sometimes, depending on what color you use, I just use ivory black because when you use ivory black with watercolors, uh, it's basically like using gray. It's just like adding gray right into the mixture. So I do it that way. So, yeah, anyway, we're going to let this, uh, this dry for a few minutes. So if you guys have any questions or anything, if there's anybody still watching <laughs> this disaster of a painting. So I did get some bleeds here. You can see these kind of like blooms. It's kind of not the best. Um, what ends up happening is like if you use too much water, like if I were to put, if I were to put some drops of water right now, if you paint on something that's kind of damp already, you're going to get these blooms, but... I'm not too worried about it in this stage because I'm going to paint over a lot of this again. Um, so this first stage is really just trying to block in some main values. I hope you guys can start to see the idea here of what I'm doing. And uh, this, this painting is really challenging because it's mostly dark. So there's a lot of darks, a lot of shadowing. So it's very tricky. It's very tricky. I knew it was going to be a challenge doing this, especially my first painting in a long, and you know, in a few weeks and doing it live, uh, in front of everybody, I knew it was going to be a challenge, but you know, I'm, I'm always up for like challenging myself and just trying it out, seeing how it goes. So Waiting to see it appear. Exactly. Me too. I'm definitely waiting to see it appear too. Not a disaster, I'm telling you. It will look great in the end. Yeah, I'm hope I hope so. I hope so. Um Yeah. I really hope so. I just got I gotta keep that initial idea that I explained in the beginning, you know, the contrast around here, some of the darks in, not too detailed around the other areas. You know, I got some nice color variety already. You know, I can zoom in here. Just see, you know, I got some nice blending of some warm colors. I'll probably add a little bit more of this in some of the light areas and uh, really darken the rest of everything down. Uh, as this painting progresses, really start darkening around the edges, darkening the bushes, this walkway. Uh, these two columns here have to be a little bit darkened in some areas, but that's the main idea right now. And at the very end, we'll put in like the darkest darks, really make stuff pop, hopefully. Maybe some darks up here, right here, here, windows, darks in the bushes, everything around this central area. So, yeah, this is the thing about watercolor is once, well, it's, while you're letting it kind of dry, you know, you can kind of plan out what you're going to do next. Um, 
is shading and value the same thing? Value just means value just means how light or dark something is. So you have light values, you have dark values. It's just yeah, I mean it's, it's basically the uh, same same thing. So yeah, a lot of the way I paint outside, like in plain air from life, usually I would like paint the bushes and then I would paint something up here. And then uh, I would kind of piece it together more rather than doing a, like washes like this. Cause now I have to wait for all this stuff to dry a little bit. But when I'm outside, I don't really have time to sit there and wait for stuff to dry cause the light changes so quickly. So I would kind of like paint the sky and then the trees and then paint something over here. And then by the time I need to go back up here, this would be dry. And you know, it kind of works. I work a little more methodically outside and I have to work more quickly, but something like this, I can kind of just chill out, wait a little bit. And uh, it's almost all dry right now. It's pretty close. Just give it like one more minute. And uh, then we'll hit it with uh, next wash you know a lot of what i've learned from like i've seen in a book or two about painting with watercolor if you can really do your painting in like three layers three washes you know you're it's going to be a pretty solid painting usually so kind of the light areas like this the next area like mid-tones a little bit more darks and then the last area uh, the darkest darks so that's how i try to do it a lot of times it definitely does not happen uh Sometimes I end up overworking it and I have to do it like so many different kinds of so many different layers and washes and stuff. So it just depends, but that's what I try to shoot for like three to four passes. Other than that, like it's difficult because yeah, if you have to start keep putting more on and more layers, it just looks overworked. So I'm going to try to remember to when I put a stroke down to just leave it, try not to touch it as much. It's going to look better. All right, so I'm gonna figure out here. Can you explain the difference between shading and values? I mean, there's not, there's really not much difference. Shading just shading is light or dark. Values are, is light, light and dark. Same, same thing, same exact thing. What type of paper is this? Okay, let's uh, open it up here. That's a good good question. Usually usually I use Arches paper, but this is Saunders Waterford. High white, 100% uh, cotton, acid free, all this stuff. Um, this was kind of, I was just trying this paper out, but normally I use uh, Arches cold press, 140 pound. That's pretty much what this is, it's just a different brand. It's actually a, a block. So that's kind of a bunch of pages glued together. So I'm just using that for now. It's really good, great paper, really like it. All right, so this is all pretty much dry. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to figure this out. Uh, what is my filming setup? Well, I'm using camera here called IPEVO, I-P-E-V-O.com. It's a little document camera that's filming downward. And then I'm using right here, my laptop webcam and on the screen, I can see the YouTubes, I can see your comments, my photos, the streaming software, I can see everything all in one window. So that's my little setup. Anyway, uh, let me figure out where, what do I do next here? Where do I go from here? <clears throat> so,
Yeah, let's see. So the next area of darks, next bit of darks. I realized I should have had like some yellow greens down here. Um, should add some more yellow greens to show that it was light. So that's gonna be tricky. I may have to put those in right now. Hmm. Yeah, see, I mean, there's always like things I could have done, should have done. So let's see. I'm gonna see if I can just put a little bit of yellow, little bits of yellow green down here. Just try to But anyway, I don't want to put too much. See, it gets it just gets darker. But I know I'm going to darken the foliage uh, more right now. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to start. I'm going to ugh, do. I start at the bottom or the top? Maybe I start at the top. I'm overthinking it. Let's just start with the building here. So I'm going to mix up some dark color, some kind of dark color. And I don't want it to be too dark yet. So I'm just trying to make some interesting shapes and stuff. I don't want to get too caught up. I don't want to get too detailed. And it's hard it's hard to paint sitting down. I'm really not used to sitting down like this painting. So normally I could stand back and kind of really be more loose with my painting. So this is kind of tricky. So what I'm doing now is I'm leaving some of these lighter areas there to really show like a light effect. I have no idea if this is going to work. This is, uh, I've never really painted something like this, I will say. Uh, one thing I need to do is put in the window shapes, actually. Uh, that's what's, I think that's what's going to really help this, because right now it just looks a little chaotic. Um, but I'm not going to, I can't really do that right now, because it's all kind of wet. Uh, we're just going to keep going. We're going to go down to the foliage at the bottom here. Hope I can pull this off, guys. I know it looks really crazy. But um, a lot of challenges with this one for sure.
Kashika says, I think you're covering too much of your building. It looks practically hidden. Don't worry. Don't worry. Have faith. Have faith. This is, this is still the beginning stages here. This is all shadow of the building. So, I know it looks weird. We don't have the windows in here yet. We don't have some, we don't have some shapes going, but don't, don't worry. Don't worry, we'll get this, we'll get it. It's very challenging, but we're gonna, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it. Let's see, there's a dark, there's actually a dark shadow shape under here that I didn't get. earlier okay I want this to melt a bit more So I'm just splattering a bit there. I really love using a lot of splattering. It really gives a lot of cool texture and stuff. More organic feel, kind of loosens things up. That's what I kind of like using that a lot. Keep it loose, keep it loose, all right. And then, let's see, let's do this pathway down at the bottom. Make it pretty purple, I think. Some blue. And gray down a little bit with some brown. Uh, if you wanna know how to make a really nice dark, uh, ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide. And then you can just vary like how much brown you want in it, it'll make it warmer. If you put more blue in it, make it cooler. That's how I mix up a lot of my, my darkest darks. Those two colors. Been doing that for a few years now. Okay, I'm gonna step back real quick, guys, just so I can see it from far away. All right. Um, okay, the area that I've avoided is kind of the darks under here. We're gonna—I'm gonna put in the windows now because that's what I feel like doing. I think. You guys can see I'm still using this big eight mop quill brush. So, do I use the color wheel? I mean, you kind of have to. Um, I mean, every artist. I mean, you're kind of got to use the color wheel. I don't know how you can't. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's like uh, 
<clears throat> okay, all right, all right, all right. Windows, windows. Let's try to put some of those in. I don't want them to be too dark. So this is like stuff I'm thinking in my head while I'm, while I'm doing this. Like this is what I'm trying to, what I think of. Like I don't want them to be too dark. I don't want them to be too square or too, you know, just. Like I said, I want this to be a little sketchy. So if I can, if I can do them in just a few, you know, one or two strokes, basically. That's what I'm gonna try to do for the most part. So I kind of covered up a lot of the sketch here. So I'm gonna try to find find them again. Yeah, you see how strong that is when you just put down a stroke like that? I mean, that's what I try to do. Even these are a little, it's too, too, uh, it's too perfect looking. Uh, there we go. Um, So what I'm trying to do over here is kind of just melt them a little bit into the shadows. Like, like I said earlier, I want the contrast to be around here. And uh, bottom of this window is actually in light. So if I can lighten up this part of it, get maybe like some kind of light effect there on the windows. Leave the darker area in shadow. It's kind of cool. Same here, maybe. Something like that. So now we're getting we're getting somewhere now, I think. <clears throat> I did not mask the lights uh, at all. This was just just me painting it and uh, leaving them leaving them there. I could have used some wax resist, but I didn't do that either. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to darken this part of the building that sticks out because I want some more contrast between this part of it and the columns. So I'm just gonna get like a nice warm color as like a, a warm gray. Try to, let's see if this works. I just blended that out with some water, some clean water. So there we go. That kind of helped a little bit, kind of push push things a little bit more. Um, and later on, I could put that dark shadow back in there underneath that roof. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for joining in. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, what inspired you to get into art and YouTube? I've been doing art since I was a little kid. And then, uh, I don't know, I don't know, YouTube. Somebody just ended up saying one day, like, oh, you should put, like, I was putting time-lapse videos, really, really short time-lapse videos of paintings I was doing uh, on Facebook. And somebody said, you should put these on YouTube or something. And I was like, huh, okay. I'll try it, I guess. I don't know. And uh, yeah, ever since then, then I started getting like questions from people in the comments and stuff. And then that's uh, just went from there, basically. 
Okay, too, too much there. Too much, shouldn't have touched it. It's always the problem. You always end up touching it too much. Like I said earlier, you put something down, you leave it, don't mess with it. So really, I'm gonna have to darken this stuff even more now. Um, once this layer dries, it's almost dry. And then I'm really gonna, the darks, darkest dark's gonna be right in here. And then boom, that's gonna really make everything pop. Get some dark under here again. So dark there, dark under here and here. This doorway will pop that out. Dark line there, some dark bushes. Um, bring in some tree shapes over here a bit. Solidify these bushes more and then that's pretty much it. I mean, it's getting pretty close, I think. I really like this light effect, so that's it came out pretty well, I think, for the most part. If I want, I might end up glazing slightly like some yellows or oranges in here, just very, very, very slightly to kind of warm the light up a bit. But um, I live by myself. Do I sell my art? Yes, I sell my art on my website, SchaeferFineArt.com. Links in the description usually, I believe. But yeah, I have like oil paintings for sale. I have watercolors for sale. I might put... Uh, I might start putting some drawings up for sale, all the sketches I've been doing. <clears throat> I sell artwork on my website, SchaeferFineArt.com, son. <laughs> yeah, SchaeferFineArt.com, that's where I always have a lot of my artwork for anyone who may be interested. So let's see. Um, Looks like we're still a little wet on this part of the roof. I get a little too crazy here when I'm like cleaning my brush and I end up dripping water and then ended up ruining this spot here, but uh, it's all right. Not much you can do about that. No big deal. So I think we can start to see just by looking at this window and some other areas and maybe down here a little bit. Actually, I can go darker here, but you can start to see like once I put the really dark darks in, how it's gonna pop. You know, I can put darks over here, darks here, there, there. So I'm just I'm just waiting one other minute here because I don't want to rush this. This is still kind of wet, so. Ugh. Yeah, there's a link. Yeah, there you go. That link, the purchase link to my oil paintings and link to my watercolor paintings. For anyone interested in the chat, appreciate it. Um, all right. Okay, okay. So yeah, the big thing about watercolor, if you guys haven't noticed, it's like planning. Gotta have a plan. You know, before I even started the painting, I figured out like where I wanted the light areas and the shadows and like, you know, just had things planned out a bit. Um, but it's still difficult, it's still pretty crazy. You know, I don't know that this process that I'm showing you guys is like the best process ever. Uh, it was kind of, it was very all over the place, very crazy. <clears throat> Thanks, Kashika. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I was in really into like forest trees and landscapes and stuff a lot uh, for the most part. So, so doing a building like this is, is a little different for me. I don't normally do architecture that much. I mean, I've been doing it a lot more recently, but uh, yeah, normally I like more organic shapes and stuff. I did not really study school in art. I did graphic design. I did like computer graphics and stuff. I did painting and stuff in my own time. All right, so let's see, let's see. Let's, let's, uh, let's get these really dark darks in here. And uh, I'm gonna use less water in this stage as well because I really want the paint to, to really get, start getting darker. 
So uh, usually in the beginning stages, you use a lot more water. And then as the stages progress, you use less and less water and more pigment, more paint. <clears throat> so this will be hopefully the last layer. I might need one more after this one. But I'm going to go I'm going to go right into my focal area, I think. I'm just going to go <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to be bold here and try to try to see if I can get this to look like what I want. So I'm just going to risk it. I'm going to risk it here. Oh, okay. All right. I may need to look at the other photo real quick. I just need to see. So if I squint at it. Okay. All right. I've been looking at the blurry photo this whole time, so I wanted to look at the other one just to get a little bit of the details maybe, but I think I'm going to be okay. So see how dark that is? Pretty dark. I'm going for it. Going for it. And then the doorway here. I'm going to try to find. I got to refine that doorway. So I'm just trying to soften some parts of this. What got you interested in graphic design uh, other than art? Um, 
you know, I went to I went to community college and I was looking for a major that they had. And uh, I just picked the one closest to art <laughs> that they had. <laughs> Literally, that's all it was. I, I mean, I did some Photoshop in the past, like on my own time. So I was kind of familiar with some of that. So I figured, all right, let's, let's try it. Let's try graphic design. So I'm just adding a little bit of heat under here. Try not to mess with it that much, but just trying to show like some little bit of shadowing and stuff, like crazy kind of light going on since it's under the trees and stuff. So that really made it this area pop. Did I mean it's kind of um, yeah. You can use your fingers with watercolor. I mean yeah, it's not a. There's no. Uh, I don't think there's an issue with that. I mean there's a lot of professional watercolorists I've seen do that. Some of them even put like you know the the their fingerprints in the painting and. You know they they joke like. Uh, you know, there's no way to forge that or, you know, it's makes it more original and stuff. But yeah, I mean, use the tools you have at your disposal. <clears throat> so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I think I just need to darken a few other areas to really uh, bring it all together, I think, for the most part. You know, I'm not trying to make it look exactly like the photo. Obviously, it's not going to anyway. But I just want to make sure, like, the idea that I started with, you know, like, that's what I want to say with the painting. So I'm just getting uh, some dark, <clears throat> dark color here for the bushes and then maybe underneath this thing, maybe the windows slightly or something, maybe over here, um, maybe not over here. Maybe I'll keep that more distant, bring this stuff closer to us, a little bit of dark blue or something up here for some trees or maybe warm dark actually. Um, so one trick to uh, that I know of, that I've known for years, when it comes to painting, your darkest dark in your painting should always be warm for the most part. Unless you're painting like a glacier or something, then it's going to be very blue. But you can see my darkest darks here. They're quite warm. They're more brown. There is blue in there that really that darkens it. Uh, you can add a little bit of like magenta, like alizarin crimson or something, but always hot. It just always looks right for some reason. Um, it brings things forward. So check this out. We're going to make some darks in the bushes here. Try to keep it simple, solidified connected it's one shape And also, this is where I can add some final kind of nice, more splattering. Really like this, some splattering texture here. It's just my thing, yeah? I don't know why. But it just gives it more of an organic feel.
sometimes I go overboard with it, but uh, hey, I like it. I'm gonna soften some of this a bit, maybe. Lighten it slightly, just some variation. you guys think it was going to come together at all like this? I mean, I, I was I was a little worried during after that very first stage of washes. I was a little worried that it wasn't going to get to this level that I got it to right now. I think I'm pretty sure I think you guys were a little worried as well, if I'm not mistaken. Be honest now, be honest. Maybe you think it hasn't even got there yet. Maybe it's not there yet. This is a little too crazy, I think. Although the, it looks a little crazier on the computer because I think the way the light in my studio is right now, it doesn't look as crazy to me, but this should have been more simple, I think, but it's not too bad, it's not too bad. I'm not, I'm not that mad at it. I can simplify it here a bit, bring some of this together. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Thanks for the donation, 66 lane, 10 bucks. Greatly appreciated. Woohoo! Can buy some more paint now. Ugh. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. So check it out. I think adding some dark up here. Let's try to do this in one stroke, hopefully. Let's see. Boom. How's that? Pretty cool. I could darken the whole shadow area a bit more, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I want to touch it again because I like I, I, I like the color of it. I like sharp edges here. Give some nice contrast. Um, you know, I, I could just soft. What I could do is soften. That's what I'm gonna do. So that stroke I just did, I'm gonna soften some of that. What I mean by that is I'm going to take a little bit, I'm just a, a damp, clean brush, so it's a little bit damp, and I'm just going to run over some of the edges a little bit, so that it kind of, rather than it just being a very straight line that we don't really have anywhere else in the painting, you know, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to stand out too much. I'm also going to modify the top a bit into the sky. So sometimes you, you need this variety of edges. Because you don't want you don't want the focus to be in places where you don't want it to be. <laughs> like you want I want to keep the focus right here. I don't want your eye to be like way up here on a sharp edge. So I'm just gonna have that this roof kind of bleed into the sky a little bit and kind of give it, lighten up the value in places, just mess with it a little bit. Just gives it a little more character. Okay, let me step back real quick. So I think what I need to do right now, I mean, this is a little crazy. I'm not really sure. I might need to reinstate some of these windows just a little bit more. I think uh, I'm going to go to this smaller brush finally and uh, really put in I 
think just like ever so, well, that's pretty dark. There we go. I think that I think that helps it a bit. And then I think I need to take the tape off the edges to really get a clear view of it. Um, and then I, I may add like some more leaf shapes over here, just to like kind of bring things up and maybe a little bit leaf here. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm going to remove the tape because then it'll it'll kind of clean it up a bit for me. You guys will see once I reveal. Oh, thanks for the donation, Susan. Greatly appreciated. Five bucks from Susan. Wow. Very, very appreciated. Very, very grateful. You guys are awesome. Very, very awesome. I'm glad this painting came out well. I was very, I was pretty nervous. Like, I didn't really think... Didn't really think I was gonna be able to pull this one off. Um, so I'm just removing the tape here, getting some clean edges, and we'll be able to see like, you know, is it done? Does it need just a little bit more? I think it's I think it's pretty much done. Like I don't know that I don't know that adding anything on this side is going to enhance what I'm trying to say, if that makes sense. You know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Um, Did I miss any comments here? I mean, I'm sure I did. If you guys have any questions, now is the time to ask me for sure. So um, I'm gonna step back real quick. I just wanna see, I just gotta see it from a little bit of distance. You know, the only, the only thing that kind of bothers me that I'm not even sure I want to mess with is these columns are a little too light, but maybe, you know, it's not super realistic that they would be that lit up uh, with all this shadowing and the trees and stuff, but maybe it is possible. You know, if the light is all hitting here, it could be hit, th hit these columns, so... I think it's okay. I wish I would have done more light in the bushes, like this yellow green. Uh, I wish I would have done more of that in the beginning. I kind of, you know, uh, didn't do that. I was focusing on the shadows and I didn't add in some of the light. I mean, there's a little bit of yellow in there, as you guys can see. There's a little bit of yellow greens and stuff. Um, but yeah, not as not as much as I had hoped to get in there. But I really think I really think adding more to it isn't going to help it, I think. Emerge, what do you mean? Why not just make a quick swipe? A uh, quick swipe of what exactly? Are you talking about the, the lights that I'm talking about? It makes the house pop more. Yeah, it's true. I mean, yeah, having these darks here really makes this pop. You know, this dark here and this, you know, contrast is there. I could darken this a bit more really make that pop. Um, 
but yeah, let me look at the actual photo. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, bushes on far left. Yeah, over here, like kind of create a little more. You know, I'm not sure if I want to solidify this anymore because I don't want it to distract here. That's the thing, like I could make some kind of tree shapes here, a little bit darker to kind of bring more depth. But I also don't want your eye focusing up here, like I want it to be in this area. So I, I kind of like it just being kind of melted over here, but... Oh, okay. Gotcha. Emerge. Gotcha. Make the pillars darker. Yeah, you know, the problem is, as soon as I make them darker, there's no turning back, you know? like, And I kind of like how it is right now, so... Yeah, I was just debating it in my mind, you know? But uh, I think it's I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. So yeah, guys, uh, I hope this was helpful in some way. I mean, it was a very crazy process. Uh, it definitely wasn't the most straightforward or simple process for like the first watercolor painting I've done on a stream lately. Uh, but hopefully in the future, I'll, I'll do some simpler ones, maybe like just landscapes or something. You know, we try something a little more simple that's not such a, a, a challenging lighting scenario because this was like super duper challenging uh, even for me so Logan says uh, when I do what you're doing now I always feel that when I add more it typically doesn't do any good and I end up it doesn't do any good and I end up not liking it as much I believe is what they meant to say yeah, I agree. I mean, that's the thing. Adding more doesn't always make it better. That's definitely true. Adding more does not make it better. Um, no doubt. You know, it's just like, for me, I think of like when I'm making music, like you can add so many layers to music if you want. You can keep adding melodies, keep adding stuff. But usually like some of the best music is very simple. It's just simple melodies, simple things. You know, it's, it doesn't have doesn't have a lot of complexity to it. You know, all the memorable melodies out there, the very simple things that people remember. I don't know. I just felt like I needed this right there. But okay, let's not mess with it anymore, Brandon. Put the paintbrush down. Okay. See, adding that little bit there didn't really do much to the whole thing. You know, it's just like, did I even need that there? Doesn't really matter. What matters is boom, that, and the whole thing looks nice. Yeah. Yep. Um, so anyway, guys, if you have any suggestions or any for future live streams, if you guys want to see more painting, let me know. If you want to see more drawings, you know, just uh, let me know what you guys would like to see in future live streams. Try to do them daily if I can. But, um, uh, yeah, if you have any questions last minute here before I jump off, if not, that's cool. Thank you guys for watching. Greatly appreciated. Thank you for the donations, of course. Very, very greatly appreciated helping support this channel so I can do more stuff like this every day. Um, Luke K. Art says, looks great. Would love to see more watercolor streams. Amazing how the darks make the colors and lights pop. Love the clean edge reveal. Totally agree, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the crazy thing. Um, that's a crazy, I think that's the most challenging thing about watercolors. You have to wait till the very end like this to really get the effect you're looking for. You know, kind of like the whole process, like you're trying to find, like, is it gonna come out? Is it gonna work? And you don't really know. I didn't really know until I put this door in there and the dark, as soon as I put that in there and then I put the dark on the bushes, I knew 
I knew it was going to be pretty decent no matter what else I did to it because that's my statement. And then making these windows, boom, that's all I really needed to do. You know, it's not exactly like the photo. You know, I could darken all these shadows a bit more. I could sit here all day and keep messing with it, but it is what it is, and I like how it came out. So, um, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, all right. Well, until next stream, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll see you around and uh, hopefully check out my latest video, man, the Maui one. It's just a bunch of beautiful clips and stuff. If you, if you just want to relax, chill out, or some good music over it. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully I'll have a draw another drawing video coming soon with the voiceover, so stay tuned for that. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys maybe tomorrow or the next day. Take care of yourself. Enjoy your weekend. Peace.